Hello everyone, uh, welcome to the Your Mark on the World Show. Today we've got Dan Reynolds here with us, the lead singer for Imagine Dragons and the host of the amazing Loud, Love Loud event coming up. Uh, you don't want to miss this episode. Welcome to Your Mark on the World, bringing you another change maker with champion of social good, Devin D. Thorpe. Dan, welcome to the show. It's we're, good to be here. We're thrilled to have you. Uh, I'm thrilled to be here. Thank you. Well, you're you're kind, and I appreciate you uh, uh, coming in. It's not often we have uh, people as guests in the studio. Uh, my custom is to have people far away. <laughs> I've been trying to get you on the show for two years. You may oh, not yeah. even know that I've been trying well, to get you on the show. So I'm thrilled, thrilled to have you. Um, you know, music is a business. Uh, you you know this. Yeah. How much how much of your time and energy goes into the business of music? You know, I try. Um, I've always tried to keep my head as much involved with the creative and not involved with the business as possible. But it's impossible to do that. So um, I have a manager who's my brother, as well as a lawyer who's my other brother. They kind of you know stick their heads in the management uh, in the business world for the most part, and then they bring. They kind of sift through it and bring me small portions so that I don't get overwhelmed with it. But if you're a musician, especially on a, on a large scale, you absolutely have to be business-minded on some level and to some degree. Now, now your music also has a message, a, a, a purpose. How would you define your message, your purpose in, mm. in your art? You know, I think that uh, your music is just a direct output of yourself and your emotions and your your thoughts um, towards the world, towards maybe yourself. And so I didn't go into it necessarily with any purpose. It just kind of became what it was. Um, so as far as Imagine Dragons, it has always been uh, the output of my emotional feelings, my um thought towards, you know, humanity. And then also, you know, when we perform live, it's, it's a, it's, it's its own thing. So as far as what the purpose is of Imagine Dragons at this point, after eight or nine years, I would say, uh, the purpose is to emit emotion, uh, to the world, to hopefully bring people closer together, um, to put on concerts that hopefully serves as an escape for people, but also as a very inclusive event where people, um, you know, are able to have an emotional experience that's very powerful together. I would say that is the, you know, the the natural course of Imagine Dragons has been on I'm a pretty emotional writer, so it happens to, to fall in that world. It's time. It's my favorite Imagine Dragons song. What's yours? You know, um, well, first of all, thank you. Uh, <laughs> I, you know, I would say uh, it's tough because it's, it's typically your newest song. Right, because because I I as an artist, you're always most excited about what you're doing now. Um, so um, there's a song on the record um, called uh, On Evolve. On Evolve, yeah, on the yep on the new album Evolve. Um, I, I enjoy Believer. I really enjoy uh, the song Whatever It Takes and uh, Rise Up. Something in those 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 they speak for me as to where my mind is right now in a lot of ways. So. Yeah, I think lyrically those those are my favorite. Cool. Now you're hosting the Love Loud Music Festival yeah. in Orem here in a, a sh couple of days. Here, what's the mission of Love Loud? The mission of Love Loud is to provide um, a, a platform, a place where the community can all come together from all different political climates, religion, non-religion, whatever it is, where everyone from all different cultures can come together. And agree on one thing, and that's that our LGBTQ youth are often marginalized and have a difficult um, road to tread. Um, especially, it can be you know, especially it can be hard for someone who is raised in a family of faith, and and the the difficult conversations that can come. Um, and so, the goal is to provide a safe place for everybody to come together, and we all can agree on one thing, and that's in love. And, and so it's going to be a place of music, food, but also where our LGBTQ youth and, and parents of LGBTQ youth 
uh, can get up and, and speak to us about how we can be better, how we can be more loving and accepting. Because, you know, we can all say, well, I think this, this, or that. But to have it come from the exact source, I think that, that is the, the best way to, to start dialogue and to start conversations. And, and for some of these people that, that, are, that are becoming, you know, it doesn't have the LGBTQ world, that environment doesn't affect them on a day-to-day basis. So this, this may be their first time kind of going and, and, and sitting down and listening for a long period from someone who's tried a, diff- a difficult life. And I think that the empathy that comes from that can be powerful and the dialogue uh, can be powerful towards opening hearts and minds and creating hopefully a more loving environment. Yeah, that's uh, it's excellent. Now you were uh, a Boy Scout. You yes, earned yes. an Eagle, Eagle Scout, Scout Award. I am an Eagle Scout, yes. You, you <laughs> served an LDS mission for the Mormon Church. Yep. How does all of that inform your music? Oh, it certainly has to because you know music is just like I said, it's an output of who you are. And so those were both large parts of my youth. Um, I went to Nebraska, Omaha for two years. And it was a very difficult, but also wonderful learning period for me. And, and um, yeah, I learned a lot and I think it, it will influence me for the rest of my life. When you're 19 years old and you go out for two years and you leave everything you know to, to, to find yourself and to hopefully serve others, you know, it was powerful for me. So I, I'm sure it finds its way into its music. And as for Boy Scouts, you know, I don't know if necessarily, you know, lighting a fire influences <laughs> my music, but... That being said, you know, I, I go camping with my kids and it influences that. But, you know, I'm sure it influences my character in, in ways that I couldn't really describe to you. you know? Yeah. Um, it's hard to put a, to actually say, you know, these ways, it kind of is, I am who I am today because of, I'm a product of my environment, I'm a product of, yeah. of those things. So, yeah. Just this morning, uh, the LDS Church uh, endorsed your Love Loud event. Yeah. How does that make you feel? It's incredible. I think that it's such a wonderful um, uh, progressive and, and really, I, I mean, historical sounds like such a big word, but I think that today marks a moment of great healing in a lot of ways for a lot of people. I think that this shows um, that the church, and, and not that the church hasn't said that they don't care, you know, that they care about our LGBTQ youth, but I think that it was a powerful way of them saying, listen, this is something good. And we can get behind this. And Love Lot is looking to be inclusive for everyone. It's supposed to be a safe environment for our LGBTQ youth, for people who are progressive, for people who are, um, you know, leaning a little more conservative. It's supposed to be for everybody to be able to come together and not be judged for who they are, but to, to you know, to agree on one thing, and that's that we can all love loud. And so to have the church endorse it, amazing, wonderful. Uh, they reached out this last week and, and said that they were, you know, going to endorse it. And I thought that was fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's great. Now, um, who is your role model? You're a role model to a lot of people, but, but who is your role model? Oh, man. I, I, you know, I have a lot of role models. I think um, my dad is a very powerful role model for me. He's always lived his life um, very peacefully and very lovingly and never never in a judgmental way and same as my mom and that really impacted me um and was an important you know guide for me i've I've been doing a lot of study uh with on martin luther king jr and and his life and all the things that he did and so um as far as somebody that i didn't get to know on a personal level i would say martin luther king just what he stood for i you know his whole um approach to life and that you know darkness can never be beaten by darkness and it only by light and, and by, uh, I, I really get that message has always spoken to me. I think that change comes about by not by people yelling in each other's faces, but by saying, let's sit down and have loving dialogue with respect and understanding of each other. And so for me, that, that has always been kind of my light, my guide, my lighthouse and, and my approach to things. Yeah. You're a super talented guy. You could be doing anything. Uh, but I've read that you felt like you really didn't have a choice. You had to do music. Why? Why did you have to do music? Um, it, it just was, it, you know, in school, I really wanted to find something I was passionate about. I enjoyed English. I enjoyed the arts. I enjoyed theater. Um, you know, of course, music. But I couldn't really get 
I didn't, you know, I, my mom wanted, you know, said, do you want to be a lawyer, go to law school? My brothers were doctors and lawyers ahead of me. I thought, oh, maybe I could be a lawyer, doctor like my brothers, but it just wasn't of interest to me. It didn't, it didn't pull at my heart. Maybe I could have done it, you know, but I just, I, I didn't want to spend my life doing anything other than what I was absolutely passionate about every single day. And so for me, it just, I, I just can't fake it. I'm, I'm a really, I'm really bad at faking it. If I were to go into some job that I was medium passionate about, I would be miserable and it would show on my face every single day. And I would be, uh, you know, it would be a terrible person to be around. So I just kind of had, this is, this is all I love. It, it brings life into me. It, it pushes me every day. Um, and I feel like it's limitless in, in what, what you can do in music. And so, um, yeah, it's, it just it wasn't a choice. Yeah. It seems to be working out. It's doing okay. <laughs> yeah. It's doing all right. Yeah. Some days better than others. But yeah, it's doing okay today. Yeah. Dan, what's your superpower? My superpower? Um, I would say I'm very, I'm fiercely loyal and, and determined. And so I am very flawed and fail time and time again. But I, I continuously, since I was young, was really good at failing repeatedly. And so, you know, when I first got into music, I, I had so many, well, mainly my family, because at the time it was, that's all I had, but my brothers always felt, said I had Cookie Monster voice, and, and you know, that was a failure. <laughs> and so that, to be told that in the beginning was quite a failure. But I kept going, and I kept trying, and I kept singing over and over, and I uh, had surgery because I was singing wrong, and I, you know, so for me it was, it's, I'm really good at failing and I'm very loyal to what I put my mind to and to the people that are around me. I've had the same best friends since I was very young and, and um, yeah, so I would say th those are my, my superpowers. Uh, those are excellent superpowers. Well, uh, Dan, before you go, and I'm so grateful that you took the time to be with us this morning. Before so. you go, take just a minute and tell us how you can, how people can learn more about this sure. event. So uh, Love Loud is going to be August 26th. Uh, you can go to loveloudfest.com and get all the information there. Um, there are still tickets available. We sold out uh, the first round of $11 tickets, but now there are, I think, $25 tickets. All the proceeds go towards GLAAD, uh, Trevor Project, and Circle Together, and Stand for Kind, uh, both localized and national charities that help our LGBTQ youth. Um, and this is going to be an annual event, so if you can't make it this year, we'll be back next year bigger and better than ever, and we would love for you to come out and love a lot. Excellent. Dan, thank you very much for being with us. Thank you. All right, let's do some good. Thank you for listening. This podcast was recorded via Google Hangouts on Air and is available at youtube.com forward slash Devinthorpe. Subscribe to this podcast on Stitcher or iTunes by searching for Your Mark on the World. Every weekday, Devon hosts a CEO, celebrity, entrepreneur, or other change maker here on the Your Mark on the World show to inspire and prepare you to make your mark. Devon is a champion of social good, writing about, advocating for, and advising people who are doing good. He is a Forbes contributor who is a recognized thought leader in social entrepreneurship, impact investing, and crowdfunding. To book Devin as a speaker, visit devinthorpe.com. Learn more about Devin's work at yourmarkontheworld.com.